Hey everybody, Dr. G here. I'm a licensed clinical psychologist and body language expert, and today we're going to be analyzing the behavior and body language from Brian Koberger's latest hearing. Currently, Brian Koberger is awaiting trial for the murder of four college students. What this hearing covered was whether or not cameras were going to be allowed in the courtroom, as well as whether or not the charges could be dismissed. Before we get started with this analysis, I do want to remind you of a couple of things. One, this is not a psychological evaluation of any kind. These are just my opinions based on his behavior and his body language. In addition to that, I do want to remind you that I do have a course on body language. If you're interested in that, you could check it out at Dr. G Explains or in the description below. Last thing before we get started is I do want to remind you to like and subscribe if you want to see more content just like this. All right, let's go. So it's been a while since I covered any Brian Koberger footage, but this one shows some different body languages, which is why I thought it might be interesting to talk about this. Let's just jump right in. Why did we forget that we passed all these laws? And I don't have a great answer for that, other than I think the only time I ever heard about field codes before I was looking into this was like a really short. Now you'll notice Brian Koberger is looking at his attorney. For a variety of reasons that we're going to get into, I do think that this attorney gives him a lot of confidence. Back in law school. So, I mean. It... Now, one thing you'll also notice now, this is very hard to see, but as he's leaning back in his chair, he glances back at the cameras. Now, I'm pointing that out because I just want you to be aware that he is thinking about the fact that he's being filmed right now based on the body language we're going to see next. It's somewhat famously kind of the first attempt to codify the law of the day. It takes place in New York. And, and so if you look at Brian Koberger's hands right now, he's doing something like this. We call it stiefling. Obviously, he's not doing it in front of his face like I was demonstrating. But it's basically you put your thumb and your tips, your fingers together. And while you're doing that, it's a way of showing people how confident you are, that you're an expert in what you're talking about, that you are feeling important in those moments. Oftentimes, you see CEOs, for example, doing this kind of behavior. You also see it from expert witnesses on the stand, and it actually benefits them. What studies have shown is that experts who do this are actually seen to be more believable. However, that's different than when other people do it. Unfortunately, when other people do this, sometimes it can make them seem arrogant. We're going to continue to watch, and I'll explain more about why that is. One of the things, the field code, very openly said it was trying to do was fix the grand jury system. Because the grand jury system was believed to be essentially broken. For a lot of the same reasons we don't seem to like grand juries uh, very much today. All right, so as he's talking about grand juries, he puts the steepling down. Let's see where it goes from here. But at the same time, while the state of New York is trying to figure out ways to once again, when he leans back, he looks back at the cameras. There's nothing wrong with that. I don't say that critically, but it does show that he does have a large awareness of everything going on around him. The state of New York is trying to figure out ways to not have to abide by the language of... So we're skipping ahead for a couple of minutes because Brian Koberger is about to start steepling again, and I wanted to give you some context for when he does it. ...and says that the burden... Uh, or for that matter, I guess the, I don't know, we got this all kind of mixed up when we were doing the argument. So the burden of proof, I think we decided was actually who. So now they're talking about the burden of proof and he's choosing to steeple again. Now this is interesting because I don't think this is a behavior that we've seen a whole lot of from Brian Koberger. I haven't watched every single hearing, but the earlier ones he certainly didn't do that. So it gives us some insight into maybe what he's going to be like during the trial as well. But if you look, he's looking directly at his attorney. He's steepling a little bit higher now. He's doing it very clearly. I do think that this is something that's giving him confidence, that he likes the argument that his attorney's presenting. And it was something I've skipped over. His, his attorney really has been arguing pretty thoroughly with the judge for a while now. So I think that those types of behaviors are giving him confidence in the direction that this trial is heading. That I was able to find, that in the state of Idaho, all these prosecutors were mistaken and even beyond a reasonable doubt. So as you can see, he looks down at his own hands while he's putting his hands up to steeple more. Watch this part again. I was able to find that in the state of Idaho, all these prosecutors were mistaken and even beyond a reasonable doubt. There's just like no indictments going on. Now, the significance of him raising the steepling. Oftentimes we do this when we're feeling confident or at least want to appear more confident. The higher we do things like that, the more confident we are the lower tends to be a loss of confidence. So it's interesting that he's raising his hands up right now during this part. Nobody was going to prison. Nobody was 
just get into that penalty. It was a free for all. And uh, so then he quickly gave up on having the high steepling. Now, the question is, is that because he's talking about the death penalty and all of these things and that's scary, or is it just because he tried to put it up high and maybe didn't feel as confident once he did it? There could be a number of interpretations for that, but it's interesting that he gave up on that so quickly and that, once again, he's aware of his body language. He looks down at his hands oftentimes while he's doing this, and it shows that he is thinking about how people see him. Let's watch that whole sequence again, then we'll keep going. There's no reports anywhere that I was able to find that in the state of Idaho, all these prosecutors were mistaken and even beyond a reasonable doubt. There's just like no indictments going on. Nobody was going to prison. Nobody was getting into that penalty. It was a free for all, and uh, we had, you know, pop. the idea for who is getting the presentment seems to come from the grand jury members themselves. Uh, they just come in with some information about somebody, they make an accusation like it's a complaint, and then it goes off and it gets treated. So, steepling has a lot to do with confidence someone believing that they are an expert. Now, if somebody isn't an expert or somebody isn't fulfilling that role, steepling oftentimes kind of irritates other people. I imagine that the way people would unconsciously interpret seeing somebody continuing to steeple and put it away and steeple and put it away is they might not see him as having consistent confidence. They might see it as something that's for show rather than how he's actually feeling, and that can work against you when you do things like that. But I do think that he has a lot of confidence in his attorney. I really do. And with some information about somebody, they make an accusation like it's a complaint, and then it goes off and it gets treated more like a complaint than it does. So despite the fact that he put the steepling down, he is leaning forward now. And we oftentimes do that when we're trying to connect with somebody, not trying to evade, which means that he thinks that they have good points probably. So he's trying to connect with the judge. He's leaning forward towards him rather than turning his body away or trying to make more distance. <laughs> it's a, a very dramatic opening of his portfolio from his attorney. Well, that's just not what happened. I mean, Judge courts say things all the time. We call it dicta. When a court is listing off... Sometimes we call it the law. Sometimes. <laughs> but what we're talking about when we talk about evidence is we're talking about dicta. I mean, nobody was arguing in that case that probable cause was the standard. They were arguing. I know I keep pointing this out, but it's really interesting to me because it does seem that Brian Koberger has a lot of awareness about his body language now. He looks back at the camera. He, does, he starts steepling again. He looks at his attorney. It's a very interesting pattern we're getting into here. So I think that he is trying to give off the impression of confidence. I really think that that's what he's trying to do here. At least that's my interpretation. Watch this part again. I mean, nobody was arguing in that case that probable cause was the standard. They were arguing over whether or not it's fair that some people get a prelim and some people get a grand jury. That's what that argument was about. And the guy didn't come in and say... See, looking down at his hands again. Oh no, uh, I got a grand jury and the standard... And looking again. ...is beyond a reasonable doubt. And once again, there's nothing wrong with this. I don't think it's anything wrong at all being aware of body language. I'm talking about body language, obviously. But it's very interesting to me that he has this level of awareness, that he is looking at what he's doing, that he is thinking about steepling from what I can tell. If that's too, I don't like that, I'd rather have a prelim with a probable cause standard. That doesn't occur in that case for various, I'm sure, fantastic reasons. And the same thing happens in these later cases. I mean, it gets responded to. And, and then, once again, he's elevating his steepling again, looking at the steepling. And I, I think that, once again, it's meant to be sort of like backup for his attorney to say, look how confident we are in this point. So we'll go ahead and stop right there. I know a lot of what I talked about today was steepling, but I think it's significant and it's something different from Brian Koberger. So I thought it would be worth pointing out. We may expect to see different body language from him when he takes the stand. We still don't know the extent to which we're going to see the cameras in the courtroom. Hopefully it will be extensive because I do plan to cover it. I haven't been covering it as much lately because I'm waiting for the trial so we can get to some really interesting coverage. Hopefully you found this interesting. If you have anything else you want me to analyze, please let me know in the comments below. Last thing before we get finished up is I do want to remind you to like and subscribe if you want to see more content just like this. All right, thanks for watching.